So you want to get into cooking, but you're not exactly sure where to start. So many of you have been commenting on the, the latest videos, the Asmund Gold Saga, all of those things, but along with some of my other videos about being nervous about how to start cooking, but you want to start cooking. So I'm putting together a series of videos for people just like yourself who need some easy recipes, but more importantly, some easy foods, some forgiving foods that are really tough to screw up. They're really delicious no matter what you do to them, but these foods will help teach you how to combine ingredients to try new flavors and to see how those new flavors impact the food that you're cooking so today I'm going to be cooking a fat injected pork chop now yes you heard me right these pork chops now you can much get them anywhere I will leave a link in the description to where you can get them from my local butcher but if you go to your local butcher or to your local meat department in your grocery store just ask them if they have any premium pork chops that are fat injected they may have different terms for them at your or local meat department I can't help that but just go and ask now today I'm cooking on this brand new pellet smoker that the awesome folks at Halo sent to me this is a portable pellet smoker don't let this deter you from starting to cook because what I'm going to show you today can be done on any heat surface whether it's a charcoal grill whether it's a griddle or whether it's a cast iron pan or whether it's your grandma's pan that you inherited whatever it is you can cook these pork chops perfectly and not have to worry about overcooking them because truth time I have absolutely overcooked these pork chops and they have been delicious every single time now they are more delicious if you don't overcook them yes but just in case even overcooking these pork chops can't ruin them I promise you to give these a try and this is a great way to experience new flavors to try some new things and to start your cooking path with some easy foods to cook let's get going the people at Halo did send me this pellet grill to make videos but they don't get to see any of these videos before they're published nor do they have any input in them okay now this is really fun now this is a battery powered pellet smoker and the battery lasts like 10 to 15 hours or something like that which is just crazy plenty long enough to cook anything you want so you pop that battery in there to start it all we do is push the button it blinks a few times hit the button again and then one more time to access the temperature we're gonna cook at 300 degrees today one great cheap thing that you can get don't mind all of the uh, cottonwood that is stuck to mine is a infrared temperature gauge okay so this is one from therm pro I'll link to it in the description below but this is gonna help you whether you're using a pan or a griddle or something that doesn't tell the temperature digitally this is a great way for you to monitor those temps to understand what happens at different temperatures is a good thing to know and this is a way to start and these things are really cheap first things first let's talk about ingredients aside from the pork chops today we're gonna do asparagus now some of you may hate asparagus some of you may love asparagus but whatever side dish you guys want to roll with that's cool with me if you want to do a potato but if you're getting into cooking I'd suggest you try a bunch of things that you haven't tried yet and I know that can be daunting and I still find it daunting trying some new <laughs> some new things we're gonna do this super simple you need a bunch of asparagus you need to wash it after you wash it I want you to cut the really woody ends off now I absolutely hate when people don't cut them high enough because I really despise grainy asparagus and the further down the stock the grainier it gets so I cut off a big portion I probably cut off more than most some may think that's a waste but if you compost throw it in your compost pile no harm no foul now that's what we're looking for with our asparagus okay real simple you're also going to need a lemon you're also going to need a baking sheet go preheat your oven to 425 degrees you can you don't have to use a little fancy rack like this if you can get the air underneath them then you don't need to turn and they cook more evenly and you get a little better cook throughout okay really easy cheap things to get a baking sheet and a wire rack the other thing I'm using is salt and pepper a type of cooking oil this is avocado oil on this one and this is Sam's Club Pecorino Romano cheese you get this a giant bag for like 20 bucks now this is nowhere near as good as the pecorino that you get out of a fresh block but this is gonna do you real nice okay parmesan's also welcome you choose whatever you want to do okay so after you've cut your asparagus go ahead and just lay them down on your baking sheet and your wire rack trying to get them as even as possible so that none of them are overlapping each other but feel free to put them right up against each other if you want for this first part then we're going to then we're going to just kind of hit them with the oil don't be afraid to be quite liberal with your oil restaurants use a lot more fat than you think they do and that's why their vegetables always taste probably better than the ones you make at home salt and pepper a 
our lemon. Cut this baby into quarters. All right, now you're going to take your lemon and just kind of squeeze it over your asparagus. Doesn't need to be perfect. One of my favorite additions for cooking is a lemon. A lemon can change your dish so many ways. Adding acidity to your dishes is something to really try and try often. Now you just wanna take your cheese and just kind of make it rain over your asparagus. Done. Okay, asparagus is ready to go in the oven. See, that wasn't hard. Woo, there we go. Cheesy, bright with lemon, salt and pepper. That's all we need. I'd say throw them in the oven for 425 degrees for approximately 15 to 20 minutes. Okay, now let's talk about the star of the show, the pork chops. So you can tell by these streaks. Now what they do with these pork chops is they take the fat trimmings and they render the fat down and they mix it with like a lemon herb marinade and then they inject that fat back into the pork chops. Now you may be saying to yourself, that's disgusting. These will be some of the most delicious things you will ever eat. And like I said in the, in the beginning, you can't mess them up because they're so moist because of that additional layer of fat that's inside of them. Now all I'm gonna do for these pork chops is just hit them with a little bit of avocado oil, brush it on. Now you can use your hands to brush it on if you want to. I just don't want to run back inside and wash my hands. Now you can use whatever seasoning you like. You can just use salt and pepper. They are amazing with just salt and pepper. Today I'm using my favorite combination with these pork chops, which is Derek Wolf's Cherry Chipotle Ale Rub. The damper is closed on the pellet smoker so that we're just getting smoke coming all around them. And that's it. Now you can use, like I said, any grill you want. I never really like to go into how long I want something to cook unless it's vegetables. But with meat, I like to primarily go with internal temperature. I want to get these to a perfect 130 degrees internal, which is not done yet because as soon as they're at 130, I wanna crank the heat up and sear them. So we're doing what's called a reverse sear here. Now you could also do the same thing by having them in your oven and then having a pan, hot as can be, as soon as you, when you're ready to pull them out of the oven and sear them in your pan. Or you can just cook them however you want to get to an internal temperature of 145 is considered denso for pork chops. You're welcome to go higher if you like. One thing that every kitchen needs, a meat thermometer. Now, I advise you to spend a little bit more money if you can and buy the waterproof ones because I'm speaking as someone who has damaged and thrown away many a meat thermometer that were cheap you will screw them up and they will stop working when you get them wet if you don't get the waterproof ones. So this one has lasted me years though. This is the Thermapen. You can see I've even melted it on the grill. Now I did bump it up to 350 degrees just because I need to cook these a little bit faster to get dinner ready for the fam. But you, if you're you using your oven, if you're using your smoker, I'd cook them at 300 degrees. Let them cook slow because any when you cook anything slow and then sear it off at the end, you're going to maximize flavor that way. And the meat is just going to pretty much fall apart for you. I Another thing I wanted to mention, if you are cooking these in a skillet, whether it's a cast iron skillet or just a regular old stainless steel skillet or a nonstick skillet, whatever it is, I want you to kind of cook these at a little higher temperature so you get a nice sear on them. I'm talking 350 degrees, 400 degrees even, and then you can kind of mess with the temperature so that you don't burn them. If you want to get the pan to about 350 degrees, 375 degrees, that would be absolutely perfect to cook these things through. They will cook a lot faster than cooking them at 300 degrees in a smoker, just to be aware of. But if you have your trusty meat thermometer, you can cook constantly temp and don't be afraid to stick your meat thermometer into your pork chops as many times as you need to do with that comment as, as you will. Okay, if you are following along on the pellet smoker or a reverse sear kind of situation, we are at an internal temp of 130 degrees on both pork chops. Now I'm gonna crank this up to 500 degrees because I really wanna sear these off and get a nice texture on the outside of them. All right, let's open up our damper. Let's begin the sear. I'm gonna put these right over the flame because that's, that's what daddy wants, he wants fire. Now let's give him a turn. Now many people will say, don't touch your meat. I really disagree. I think you should move it around and get the best sear you can with whatever cooking tool you're using. All right, let's give him a flip. Now you should probably use tongs for these so you're not stabbing them all the time, but I didn't feel like running back inside. Once I'm outside, I'd like to just stay outside. 
Now, just like a steak, you want to let your pork chops rest. Again, all that juice needs to soak back in. We'll let these babies rest for five minutes. Just to show you that not everything comes out perfect in a YouTube video. I got too busy doing some other things and I kind of forgot about my asparagus and I way overcooked my asparagus, but they're still gonna be good. I screw up all the time, you will too. It's the only way to learn. We've got two pork chops. One I cooked well done, another one I cooked medium. So let's cut into them so you can see that they're both juicy and they're both gonna be delicious. I'm gonna slice these at a little bit of an angle just for presentation. Cut thick slices. It's hard to cut upside down. There are our slices. Beautiful. Tons of juice, okay? Perfectly cooked. Here's the well done. Now, just as juicy. <laughs> you can't go wrong, you can't screw these up, you gotta give these a try. Here we go. Mm. Mm. The cherry chipotle is so bright, kind of sweet, but still savory too. The smoke is so good. The char is so good. When you combine smoke and fire and fat and salt and sweetness and savor, it's the perfect dish. And it's so easy, you can't screw it up, I promise you. If you wanna get into the kitchen and start learning some different cooking techniques, start with easy foods that are really difficult to screw up. I screwed up the asparagus and it's still really good. Can't go wrong. Take your little bit of extra lemon and just drizzle over your asparagus. Please let me know what you thought about this video. As always, I appreciate you. Thanks for watching. Watch this. Pull over the top now. Ain't anything. I'm way too hot now. I already yet. Don't need a rear view. They're behind me. Cause my future's so bright in my blind. Pull up. Why I gotta shine so bright? Don't need a reason. Escorting my head to south. They wish you see.